Good morning. We are still in the Christmas season. This is the second Sunday after Christmas, so Merry Christmas. We are so glad you are here with us today. If you are a guest, we're glad you're here with us also. And please sign uh, the purple books that are at the end of each of the rows. I'm Pastor Nanette Christofferson, and along with Pastor Steve Talmage, we welcome you to Love of Christ Contemporary Service uh, in person and online as well. We have just a few announcements this morning. The office is closed um, tomorrow in observance of New Year's Day. WOW resumes on January 10th, and children's musical rehearsal resumes on January 17th. Uh, the, there's a band coming to town on January 21st called the Thaddeus Rose Band. This is an event for families, for all ages. It is a celebration of music and of life, and it's just a fun time. So we ask that you come to that to help support our music ministry. That is on Sunday, January 21st at 7 p.m. Tickets are available after the service, but they're also available online as well. We have a hospitality a fellowship time after this service in the outreach room. The outreach room is directly as you go out these doors straight away past the playground and you will be right at the outreach room with coffee and cookies and an opportunity to get to know one another better. We hope you can, you can join us there. Sunday school begins next week, and we'd like to thank all volunteers who helped with the setups and the teardowns and all of the things that made this busy Christmas season so special. So thank you to all the volunteers. And also to let you know that company is coming today. We have Family Promise arriving with three families that we will be offering dinner to for this whole week coming up and also a place to stay. These are families who are experiencing homelessness, and we work through the nonprofit of Family Promise. If you are interested in just seeing what goes on, please come at 5.30 uh, anytime uh, on any of the days, and we'd be happy to show you around and what goes on. And you might be interested then in serving yourself. We have over 35 volunteers to make this week work, and uh, we just thank all who have volunteered uh, to offer their services and their service uh, during this week. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds as we get ready to enter into worship. Please stand as we sing praises to God. Be here. We are going to, uh, this, was a, this was a song that we did during uh, Christmas Eve, but it was such a good song, I felt like we, we have to do it again, especially while we're here in the Christmas season. So this, the chorus part gives you a really good opportunity to lift your hearts and lift your voices to the Lord as we sing Light of the World. Light of the world, light of the world, treasure of heaven, brilliant like the stars in the wintry sky, joy of the Father, reach through the darkness, shine across the earth, send the shadows to fly. Light of the world, from the beginning, the tragedies of time were no match for your love. From great heights of glory, you saw my story. God, you entered in and became one of us. Here we go. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah for the things he has done. Come and adore him. Bow down before him. Sing hallelujah to the light of the Poorer, we are the rich. 
treasure by the price that he paid. Here we go, sing. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah for the things he has done. Thank you. We, we, uh, we, uh, the next song, we join our hearts with those who are celebrating the, uh, the, the, fi- the, the first coming of, of, of the Messiah. So we celebrate those because uh, for, for hundreds of years they waited and waited for the Messiah. But now the wait is over. The Christ of whom the prophets told, the promised one of old, wait no more. The Word made flesh before our eyes, salvation in His cries, oh, wait no more. that keeps me from letting go and coming home I will wait no more and everything I'm looking for I find in you and so much more I will wait no more I'll wait no more the wait is over is dawn. The light of the world has shone upon us. Hallelujah. Emmanuel, God of heaven has come to save us. The wait is over.
Let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord, we offer you praises, praises of the birth of your son and what your son has done for us. Amazed that you came humbly into this world and became human for the sake of us. God, as we hear the words today from Scripture, may the light that you brought forth as a child and how you suffered and died in the light that you continue to bring to the world, may we shine forth in that light with courage, with bravery, and share that light with the world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated with the children. Please come forward for the children's message. Miles, do a header. Yeah. Are you okay? Are you all right? He's fine. Okay. What a nice big sister. You just kind of pick them up and drag them along, right? <laughs> well, we just sang a song with the band, and it's called The Wait Is Over. What did we just get over with? Waiting. Waiting for what? Jesus. For Jesus. But I think the last time you were up here, Devin, you were talking a lot about Christmas yes. and presents. Did you have to wait for presents? Mm -hmm. You did have to wait for presents, didn't you? Was it hard? Yeah. And then you got to Christmas, and then you got to open them, and then it was like, do you have to start waiting all over again now? No. Is that going to be easy? No. no. Waiting is really, really hard. And in a minute, you're going to listen to a Bible reading about Jesus going to the temple in Jerusalem and there were two, two older people, a man and a woman. And we have a few older people here too. And they might, they might have been about the same age as a lot of these people. And they had a story about waiting. They were waiting and waiting and waiting. And who were they waiting for? Jesus. They were. They're waiting for Jesus, and I want you to listen very carefully when that Bible story is read, because you're going to hear when they saw baby Jesus, how do you think they felt? Happy. Happy. And they sang praises, and they let everyone around them know who Jesus was, the Messiah the Savior of the world. Now, the only way we kind of capture that is when you were born and when I was born and when all these people were born, their mamas and dadas, their grandpas and grandmas, when they got the news or when they saw you for the first time, did they say, do you think anyone said, take them away? <laughs> do you say, Ah, uh, this, is, this is the most horrible thing that's ever happened to me. Did they sing praises? Did they tell everyone around them how happy and joyous they were? Yeah. Because each and every one of us is special. And each and every one of us is loved. And Jesus comes to tell the whole world and everyone, we are loved by God forever and ever, period. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for helping us to wait. Thank you for giving us others who remind us that even though the wait may be long, when it comes to happen, our hearts and our mouths are filled with praise. Because you remind us over and over, we are loved. And in Jesus, you show us we are loved. In your name we pray. 
Amen. All right, now remember, listen to the Bible story. Let's stand for the gospel. We lost a shoe. <laughs> My soul proclaims your greatness, O oh God. My spirit rejoices in the love of my Savior. You have looked with favor on my simple way. Good morning. The gospel reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. <clears throat> when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, the promised one, the Lord's Messiah. Amen. Well, we have arrived on the eve of the end of a year and the beginning of a new year. And for some of us, we cannot wait to put 2023 behind us. For others of us, we maybe in 2023 had some great moments, some times of celebration and joy, and we may have a little bit of grief about leaving the joy and the celebrations of this past year behind us. Some of us may be considering resolutions, promises made to ourselves or promises made to someone else or maybe even a grand promise to God what you're going to do in 2024. Some of us may be a little anxious about what 2024 may hold. Current global conflicts, mass migration across this planet, extreme climate events, our upcoming presidential election, or to just navigating personal or family circumstances may cause a little anxiety. Not knowing what awaits us in the coming year, we're invited to learn from two senior saints, two elders in our Bible reading today, 
who give us a proper posture of patiently waiting, of patiently waiting and trusting God has been, God is, and God will be at work living out long-held promises of consolation and redemption, comfort and liberation, compassion and deliverance. Though the gospel accounts we have in our Bible provide little biographical information about Jesus, we are given a few clues. In Luke's version, we learn this morning that Joseph and Mary are devout Jews. They are devout Jews, and they are followers of the laws of Moses or the Torah. They practice the rituals that are required by their faith tradition. It is possible Luke merges two trips to Jerusalem into one in our story today because we have first the law of Moses requires, requires that after the birth of a boy, on the eighth day, that boy needs to be brought and dedicated to the Lord and be circumcised. A sacrifice is to be offered. And in this case, because of Mary and Joseph's low-income situation, they purchased the cheapest offering, two turtle doves. They offer that sacrifice, which will then release them back, release Jesus back into their care. The other ritual is the rite of purification required for all newborn mothers. And if you have a male son, a woman has to wait 33 days. If you have a female, you have to wait 66 days. Go figure. But during that time of waiting, a woman who's just given birth to a baby, and a lot of it's tied because of all the blood that's involved in delivering a baby, the woman is declared impure, unclean, ritually unacceptable. After 33 days, they come and they receive a ceremonial washing and they're declared clean, purified, and welcomed back into community. The emphasis in our reading this morning seems to be more on the dedication of Jesus and his circumcision in the temple that day. It is in this place of worship, sacrifice, and devotion to God that God provides two witnesses to affirm what the shepherds and the messengers from heaven, the angels, had already declared to Mary and Joseph at the birth of Jesus. That this baby they hold in their arms comes with a divinely anointed mission. First on the scene is Simeon, and Luke describes him as righteous and devout. He knows his nation's history. He knows the suffering and displacement of his ancestors. He knows the desecration and oppression of foreign emperors and their militaries. He knows the realities of doubt, despair, and discouragement when hopes come crashing down, when prayers seem unanswered, when life does not turn out the way that you expect or want. But he also knows about patience, confidence, and trust, and a God who is a promise maker and a promise keeper. Simeon was a man who listened and looked for the Holy Spirit to guide, direct, and provide. On this day in the temple, he was known as one who was looking for the Lord to bring consolation, to bring comfort, to bring deliverance to God's people, but not just God's people, Israel, but to even those outside the family tree of Israel. He had a revelation as he approached the twilight of his years. He would not see death before he had seen the Messiah. We don't know if Simeon had just gotten back from his family physician who told him that his days were numbered. But when life expectancy in the time of Jesus was just 26 years of age, any day after 26 is a bonus. Simeon is guided by the Spirit to make his way 
to this couple he sees in the temple area. As he makes his way over to this couple with a baby in the mother's arms, he cannot contain himself, but he goes and he scoops up the baby from Mary's arms. And then he begins to sing a song, a song that we call the Nunc Dimittis in our worship liturgy that's been sung by Christians for 1,800, 1,900 years. It's a song of permission. Permission to depart, to die in peace, which we still can sing today. Simeon can face his death with peace because his eyes have beheld the glory of God. They've beheld God's salvation, God's deliverance, liberation, and consolation in this baby named Jesus. Notice his song is inclusive. It is broader than what people might expect. He includes a group of people that aren't just Jewish because he declares that this baby Jesus is not just the Jewish Messiah. He is also a light for revelation to the Gentiles. And what is that light that Jesus will reveal? God's love is for everyone. God's love includes everyone. God's desire is that all may know this love despite the obstacles, the barriers, the lines, the laws, or the judgments humans may attempt to create to turn God's love being only available to a select few. But after this song, we gain additional insight into what Luke and the other gospel writers will share. As Mary and Joseph hear this song, they are amazed. They are amazed by the stranger grabbing their baby and saying all these things about their baby. And maybe they're still digesting the drama of that amazing birth of Jesus and all the visitors that came, both heavenly and local, in the form of shepherds to his birth. But it's no coincidence that this temple soloist is singing to confirm not just to the crowd in the temple, but to Joseph and Mary as well, who Jesus is. This baby is going to grow up. And Simeon's words acknowledge the life that will unfold from this little one. Simeon turns his attention now to Mary, and looking at Mary, he says, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Well, talk about sucking joy out of the room. Simeon is direct. Simeon is honest with his mother. The life ahead will be difficult. It will be heartbreaking. The forces of sin, death, and evil wrapped up in leaders and institutions and even family systems to avoid having their inner thoughts, agendas, and deep-seated desire to be in control and serve self over others at all costs will be revealed and opposed. Though Jesus will draw God-seekers, miracle-seekers, and curious crowds the more that Jesus will reveal about who he is to the world, to the people who gather around him, the more he reveals what the reign and realm of God or heaven is like, there will be rising opposition and resistance. And what mother does not feel the pain of her child when false accusations or malicious words are targeted toward your child? What mother does not know the pain of heartbreak 
when they see the rejection, the betrayal, and the disappointment your child knows when they simply dare to live out their truth and practice kindness to others. Some of you mothers sitting here today, you know all about this. You know all about a sword piercing your heart or your soul because of your love for your child, no matter their age. It appears Luke does not want to give Mary and Joseph any time to digest this encounter with Simeon, as the next thing we know, another visitor appears, another stranger appears in that temple area. And this time, typical of Luke, it's a woman. And not just any woman, it is a woman prophet named Anna. Like Simeon, we learn she too is devoted, patiently, patiently trusting in the Lord, even after experiencing severe personal loss. Assuming she was probably married in her mid-teens, and only having been married for seven years due to her father's, her father's, her husband's death, it is possible that she's been widowed 60 years. 60 years. And for those 60 years, she never left the temple. She devoted herself to God. She worshiped, fasted, and prayed day in and day out. And like Simeon, Anna, during her years of patiently praying for 60 years, she, along with many, longed for the redemption of Jerusalem. Both believed God had not abandoned God's people or God's promises long ago to create a people that through whom God would bless them to be a blessing to the world. They trusted God would keep God's promises no matter how long it took. Simeon looked for consolation and Anna looked for the redemption of Jerusalem. John Piper writes about both. Consolation probably speaks to those longings that we have for healing and restoration from all the past losses and miseries of life. In the prophet Isaiah, the people had experienced judgment and exile with all its guilt and fear and loneliness and death. Consolation is when God comes to heal. God comes to restore and revive all that has been thrown away, all that has been lost. Redemption probably speaks to our need to be delivered from the powers that still hold us bondage. Redemption is a work of power to save from enemies that still threaten us. In this baby named Jesus, two prophets Two senior saints, Simeon and Anna, profess, profess he is both the consolation and the redemption so long ago promised and sought. They invite us to live our lives with a similar confidence and patient trust in the healing that we seek, the redemption or restoration for which we hope, and the forgiveness that we need, that they're still found in this one named Jesus. Simeon and Anna did not have the benefit that you and I have to look backward to know that this baby will grow up into adulthood, will grow up into a man, and he will face everything. Simeon referenced in his words to Mary. But his ultimate rejection, death on a cross, will become how God ultimately keeps God's promise to console and to redeem all people, both Jews and Gentiles. Through the pain, the loss, and the grief that this baby will grow to know and experience, we, know, we, become, we become the beneficiaries, the beneficiaries of trusting in a God who becomes one with us demonstrate what unconditional love is like, even if it causes the piercing of a mother's heart. Because again, who among us has not dared to love, has not 
dared to love knowing that heartbreak is the risk that we take. The risk that we take to experience the depth of God's love for ourselves, for the sake of others, for the sake of this world. Amen. Please stand as we profess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we continue to contemplate the message that we just heard, Let us join our hearts today with those who, in wonderment, looked at the Christ child and wondered to themselves, what child is this? What child is this who laid to rest? On Mary's lap is sleeping, who angels greet with anthems sweet, while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Trusting in God's good news of great joy for all people, we offer our prayers for the world, the church, our neighbors, and those in need. Lord, in your mercy. 
You inspire faith in our hearts and call us to rejoice with our whole selves at the salvation you bring. Make our churches places of belonging for all people in the fullness of their being. Lord, in your mercy. Your praise is sung throughout creation in all times and seasons. As the new year turns, ground us in your changeless and sustaining love. Keep us attentive to the rhythms of the cosmos and inspire us to be aware of your presence in creation. And dare us to place love over all. Lord, in your mercy. Give hope and stamina to leaders who work tirelessly for the sake of the most vulnerable. We pray especially for organizations working on behalf of children to provide basic needs, to protect from abuse and neglect, to address trauma, and to rescue from trafficking. This week, we lift up Family Promise and the families that we are serving, and over 30 volunteers from our community who will be welcoming these families who are experiencing homelessness. May we be light upon their path. Lord, in your mercy, sustain all people who, like Simeon and Anna, have been waiting for salvation and wholeness. We pray especially for anyone with chronic illness, all people who are in physical rehabilitation or addiction recovery, and those experiencing complications from long COVID. Lord, in your mercy. May this community of faith be a joyful and welcome place for all ages and generations. Teach us to honor the wisdom of children, the inquisitiveness of youth, the thoughtfulness of adults, and the knowledge of elders. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for all the beloved who lived with expectation and departed this life in peace. Sustain us in joy until we join them around your throne. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. I don't have to be perfect to get inside the door. I don't have to be good to be loved. If it's true that my wounds are what the healer's looking for, then it's a good thing I got more than enough. Hallelujah, there's a place for me in the company of sinners saved by grace. that you call blessed if my weakness shows the power of your blood if my failures preach the gospel more than my success then it's a good thing I've got more than enough hallelujah there's a place for me in the company of sinners saved by grace Hero. If I'm down, I know I belong. I'm part of the family now, I know I belong. If I'm up or if I'm down, I know I belong. I know I belong. Hallelujah, there's a place for me. The company of sinners saved by grace. Here on this 
there's a place for me. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, there's a place for me. And let us pray. Lord God, as we prepare to enter this meal, this meal of hope, this meal of love, this meal of knowing that your presence is within it. May this meal strengthen us and continue us to walk in your grace and to delight in your will to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. And he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is ready now. Angels from the
God, for whom we wait, in this meal you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. As we sing our final song, Ben Peters will lead us today in Angels We Have Heard on High. love the Lord.